this is a, an update finally on the 3D printed Enigma machine. I forgot to to film the first part of it, so this is how it is at the moment, um, and I'll show some of the the steps I've taken to get to here. Uh, definitely making progress. I think I'm going to have a problem at some point with the friction in the mechanism and getting it all to actually work, but. We'll figure that out when we get there. But this is how I've got to this point now, which is, as you can see, the plug board is on the machine and complete. Um, and the entry wheel is now on the machine and wired up. And I've started wiring up the keyboard, the lamp board, and the plug board. So I'll go into that a little bit more now. So these are the, the little copper rivets I'm using for the flat contacts on the rotors and the entry wheel on the Enigma machine. These are actually copper rivets. And in order to be able to wire these up, I want to be able to solder a wire onto the end of them rather than onto the side. So the reason for that is I want to attach all the wires to them first and then push them into the plastic parts rather than trying to push them through and then solder them because obviously copper is a good conductor of heat and it'll just melt the plastic. So in order to get a good joint there, a good strong solder joint, what I wanted to be able to do is, I don't think we'll be able to see it, but um, drill a small hole in the end of each rivet to give me somewhere to um, push the wire into and then solder it. So in order to do that, drill all those, those holes in the ends of these rivets accurately, I made up a little jig. This was the first one I made. And it's just a piece of turned aluminium with a, a two millimeter hole through it, which is the size of the shaft of the rivet, and a slot cut in it. And the idea was I could put this into the, the chuck of the lathe, clamp down on it, and it would grip the, the rivet, and then I could drill the hole. And that did work, but this one I needed to so much clamping force, you can see it, it started distorting the, the piece so it wouldn't run true anymore. So I made up, I machined up a new one from a piece of steel. Um, it's a little bit rough. If I had slitting wheels, I would have cut those slots on the mill, but I don't, so I had to do it with a, with a hacksaw by hand, which is why it went a bit wonky. And obviously, the slot on the right hand side there doesn't go all the way through otherwise it would fall apart but that now lets me take a rivet and you sort of put it into the end there and I need to use a punch to, to to tap it home it doesn't need to go all the way down it just needs to go enough to be able to be held and then that can be clamped into the chuck of the lathe and I can drill out the little one millimeter hole um, you might notice there's no drill bit there that's because I broke my my only remaining one millimeter drill bit uh, the end broke off these are so small and fine you have to be really careful when you're drilling with them if you try to go too fast you they can bind up especially drilling into copper which is soft so it can stick and it'll just snap them so I need to get more one millimeter drill bits but you can imagine drilling that hole in the end and then I uh, turned up, it's just a nail basically, to use as a little punch because I didn't have a punch small enough. Um, and then you can tap that rivet out. I'll, I'll probably have to edit the sound here because this is quite loud, but... No. There we go. Uh, and then you punch the rivet out. And that'll have the hole drilled in the end. So I managed to do about half of them for the entry wheel before my drill bit broke. Um, I'm going to order more drill bits and then I can finish doing the rest. Um, obviously this is going to take quite a bit of time. So there are um, five rotors and the entry wheel to do. So that's what, six times 26, so 130, um, 130 of these to drill plus a few extras, because some of these rivets aren't very well formed, and 
the heads aren't quite circular so you need to uh, check that you've got the right ones and I've just noticed my I have to be a bit careful with my punch that I don't punch too hard because this is copper so it's going to be soft um, I might actually make up a little brass punch which would be better just so I don't deform the heads of the these rivets too much but that uh, hopefully that'll work and that means I can solder all the wires onto these first I'll basically do a, a batch a whole batch enough for several rotors all at once and hopefully that makes wiring everything up a little bit easier been doing a little bit more on this Enigma machine I uh, hunted through my boxes a bit and I did find another one millimeter drill bit so I was able to finish drilling the ends of these rivets. Uh, I had forgotten though that these rivets come in different sizes. They have different size heads and some of them are the smaller ones. Uh, it's probably a bit hard to see but in here you can see there's there's two different diameters there. So I have to make sure I use the right diameter ones. I think it's about four millimeters. And that, uh, right where it focuses, um, by drilling the little hole in the end, that one's a little bit messy, but uh, you can see how that allows me to solder the wire straight out the end of the pin. I use my little helping hands here, and I've been finding it hard going because I I pinched a nerve in my neck oh, a couple of months ago now, and and my left hand's been all tingly, um, and so it, it's just hard trying to do this this small fine work soldering and, and gripping the wires and things to actually solder everything um, being the geek that I am because I've hurt my neck I was interested to see what the vertebrae actually look like so of course when you've got a 3d printer you can 3d print things like that so um, these little channels are where the nerves come out and that's where it got pinched which is very painful but it's getting better now it'll just take time so after I have soldered the wires onto the ends of the rivets I push them through the plastic uh, this is for the entry wheel and then on the back just use a piece of heat shrink uh, to seal it all up so that's all going to fit into here and then I can look at putting the connectors on the other end so move that away the other thing I have done so this is the machine here I have finished the plug board. So this is the plug board all assembled. Uh, it's going to be a bit tricky to see, but you can see all the wiring inside there uh, for the plug board, and then it comes out on these headers here. So the way this works is there's an input pin and an output pin, and when there are no plugs in the sockets, uh, the input just goes straight to the output. So I've made up 10 of these cables and these cables are basically a crossover cable so it, it just simply crosses over from the tip to the to the ring part uh, on these plugs and the way I've got it wired up means that just swaps inputs and outputs. So these plug in like that. Um, into the into the pairs of the sockets and that's how the plug board works uh, these are just silicone wire inside here and um, this this outer sheathing is actually um, old boot lace well new boot lace um, you buy boot laces like this and you just sort of pull the middle bit out you can extract that and then I just put that on the outside of the wires um, these are all nicely terminated inside here and heat shrunk so there's no chance of them coming undone uh, there are 10 pairs of um, or 10 cables rather so interestingly on the Enigma machine 10 cables doesn't give you the most number of combinations on the plug board uh, if you use 11 you actually get more combinations we're, we're talking millions and millions and millions anyway so it doesn't really make much difference um, interestingly, if you have 12 pairs of cables, you get less combinations just because of the way the mathematics works. So 
Um, you can see in there I've tried to keep the, the cabling neat. It's being the first attempt, this one isn't perfect. Uh, some of the wires are not quite as neat as they should be, but this is the prototype, so it should be fine. I've also wired in the, the power. So the power comes in on these two little sockets through the switch to these little headers and to the rest of the machine from there. The switch uh, had fairly chunky wires coming out of it and I ended up drilling out the rivets and pulling the switch apart and soldering on some thinner wires um, because this switch is rated for, for quite a few amps. I think it's 10, 15 amps, something like that. And I'm only running you know, half an amp through it. So I didn't need such fat wires um, and that made it a bit easier to to wire up. So the entry wheel, you can see the, the bunch of cables on the end of that. Um, the entry wheel goes on to one side of the keyboard, uh, the plug board, sorry. So I'm going to put this into its little housing and uh, then terminate the, the wires. So I've been using little Molex type connectors and uh, these crimpers which I got from China which work really well. Uh, obviously not as good as the proper Molex ones but the proper Molex ones are hundreds and hundreds of dollars and these were relatively cheap and they actually make a really nice crimp. Uh, that's the brand Iwis I think it's called. It's a bit hard to see but uh, they were well worth getting. The other thing I did do is I flat sanded this. I haven't quite finished. I think this should be good enough, but I I sanded this on a, on a flat board with a piece of um, 1200 grit wet and dry just to get this nice and flat. So when the... Uh, it'll actually be a rotor that rubs on it, but you can see here all the little pogo pins and that's what pushes on all those contacts. So... I haven't started on the rotors yet because I wanted to make sure I can do the pogo pin side of things and the flat contact side and that it's going to work before I commit to making a set of five rotors. It takes a long time because of course it's 26 of these and you, you, it's, it's a lot of work. But theoretically if I get this wired up and make the cables that connect the rest of the machine together, the keyboard um, and the lamp board, I should be able to actually test out the machine without a rotor because I can just hold this reflector up against the entry wheel and I know what the wiring is inside this so I should actually be able to see when I press the key that I get a, a different lamp light up so that'll tell me that the connections are working and that this you know this is actually going to work um, if I can make it work with this then it should work with the rotors the only thing that might be a problem is reliability and also just friction. Um, by the time there's three rotors inside there, inside the stack, friction could be a problem. I'm, I'm not going to know until I've, until I've built it. But um, you can see that even on real Enigma machines. I've never actually touched one. So it'd be really interesting to see what the keyboard feels like. But in all the films and... and um, videos displaying them, you can see that they, they you have to give the key quite a hard push to make the mechanism work, a bit like an old-fashioned typewriter. So it's going to be interesting to see how well it works once it's all complete. Okay, I think we've hit a bit of a milestone here. Um, I've started doing the wiring, the main wiring loom, which links the keyboard to the lamp board to the plug board. And it's going to be a bit fiddly. Um, the way the connectors on the lamp board and the keyboard are arranged is in rows according to the letter, but the plug board is done alphabetically. So the wiring gets a little bit tricky, so um, you have to be really careful how you put the pins into these little connectors to get everything wired up correctly. And I've actually run out of wire. Um, I don't think I'm going to have enough to, to finish this at the moment, so what I've done is just wired up one group of letters, which is just these four keys on the keyboard here. Um, 
what I can do is I have the reflector in here. I don't have the rotor stack in there, but I can cheat and I can push the reflector up against the entry wheel and it sort of short circuits the whole scrambler mechanism. Now, I've only got four keys and four lamps wired up, but because I know exactly what this reflector is doing, I can make use of the plug board to switch letters around to make use of the four keys I've got wired up, if that makes sense. So I know when I press A, it comes in on the entry wheel, comes into A on the, the B reflector, and A is wired to Y. So using the plug board, you can swap Y with one of the letters in my group that I've already got wired up. So I can swap Y for J. So theoretically, if this is working, I should be able to press A. It shoots through the, the plug board. A is not being changed. Goes through the entry wheel into A on the reflector. Comes out on Y on the reflector. But Y is going through the plug board and being swapped with J. So if this is correct, I should be able to hit the A key and see the J lamp light up. And I've done the same for R and S. So um, when you press R, it comes out of the reflector on uh, B, I believe. Yes, B. So I've got B swapped with S. So we should see the same here. Now, because this doesn't have the full stack in there, I have to manually clamp these together in the right position to short circuit it. So I'll have to put the, the phone on the tripod and then we can see how the keyboard and the lamps work. So as you can see I, I have to clamp these two together. Uh, it takes quite a bit of force which is a little bit of a worry um, because this is going to be multiplied four times because there'll be three rotors with pins in there plus the reflector with with pins. So it's actually going to take quite a bit of tension to get all of those springy connectors to, to um, compress down. So that'll be interesting to see if that works when I get that far. But with it like this, if I hit A, you can see J lights up. And then of course the reciprocal is true. So J makes A light up. And that's where the the um, reciprocal nature of the enigma comes into it. If A goes to J, then J has to go to A. And we can see R and S work the same way. So... Even though that's only four letters wired up, that one test proves that the keyboard's working, the lamp board's working, and the plug board's working, as well as the reflector and the entry wheel. So next, I guess, is finish off this wiring. I'll, I'll see if I can get more cable. I'm using, um, I think it's 32 AWG silicone wire. So I'll order more of that and I can finish doing this wiring once I've actually built the loom, I'll wrap it all nicely and start looking at how to do the rotors.